Hello, this is Crunch Star, and I am looking at Scalar 2.9. The biggest change I think of this one is this live feature right here. You can turn it on, turn it off. Basically, if I play these chords, you notice that these are not changing, but if I turn this on, it changes. It supposedly detects the currently playing chord that you're doing and suggests the next chord. So if I remove a whole bunch, so if I play this one, it's suggesting all these. So basically, if I move this down, it has another set of suggestions for the next progression. And these kind of adapt to several different things that you need to do. What I want to do is I want to turn my keyboard on here. Okay, so it's only it's only the ones that you have currently playing down here. It, it doesn't detect based upon the chord that if you're actually playing it. I wanted to see if it would do that or not. Overall, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to sort of in a lot of my videos I kind of fly blind. I have kind of a newer setup now where I can actually have a second screen and look at stuff. So it might actually help me a little bit. So I'm going to talk over some of the other changes other than this live mode. This live mode, I kind of want to get in really quick and mess around with it and play around and, and see what it was about. And then you got these other buttons over here like auto detect and then minimize movement. All right. So if you don't know about Scalar, it's a really handy tool for doing chords. I use it every now and then when I want to get a chord progression or if I want to basically just drag and drop stuff. Like that, and then and then actually put it on my on my timeline here to help me build chords and stuff like that. Because basically, as much th music theory as I'm going through, there's stuff that I, I I still couldn't tell you what a G minor is out of the blue in the C sharps or the C sharp. Huh? Uh, that's a programming humor there in the in the C major scale or the like E minor scale or whatnot. Kind of kind of handy little tool to help you with remembering all of the, the billions of chords, probably a couple hundred chords, that you could literally go through. It has voicings, it has uh, different things where I can, if I want to play the ninths, the sevenths, and then different variations of that, it does that. It also has a bunch of helpers, and that's what the next set of things adds. It says there's new eight arpeggio patterns. So basically, if we go in here, we hit arpeggiator, or arpeggiator uh, thing. And there were supposedly some new patterns up in here to mess around with. some new chord sets it, this specifically says like celtic so there should be celtic somewhere on here i actually don't see it it could be my eyes celtic i do see chill i do see country uh alternative and progressive rock so basically, it's probably some new uh, new chord sets for that, and that basically just gives you more suggestions. Kind of like that. There are 13 new ba bass expressions in the new triplet bass category. So if we go into here, I know there's bass right here, and then there should be triplet. These are by uh, genres. Common bass, basic, straight. Oh, I'm batting 100 today and finding all the, the stuff that they're calling out. Triplet bass category. And then progressive chord sets category renamed to progressive house. So I guess that's the down here. Uh, oh, yeah, see, they got progressive rock and progressive house.
the by the way, if you're if you're still listening at this point and haven't given up on me, this little trick up here, if you if you press the C right here on, on actually any one of these, what it does is it specifies like for this one right here, for this button it plays this chord, for this button it plays this chord, this button plays this chord. And all you have to do is click on one of these uh, over here for the same thing for just the, the chords and the scale. So these are the suggested chords of the song. This one's for the scale. This one's of the pattern that you're building or the the thing that you're building. I was thinking about making a video on how to replicate this in Bitwig on the grid. And that might be the next video. Spoilers. Because I really do like this little feature. And it's a, it's a common feature in a lot of things, I think. Cthulhu Chords has it, and Instacord has it. So it allows you to hit, you, it allows you to press on the, the key on your keyboard and actually play the chord without having to actually twist your hand into, into several different configurations. Play it. Okay, and then they have a new Passages articulation. Okay, so up here, you go to Passages right there. And then these, there's different phrases for your passages, and they played certain things. So if I play this, that's a passage. That's a passage in a different chord, you know. But I think what they're saying that they added is, is that these key phrases right here will change the passage. So that's passage one, passage two, passage three, passage four. And so you got seven passages, and they're all key switched, so you can switch between the passages while it's playing. That's sort of kind of cool. I, I, I think I like that. Of course, you can increase the speed of what you're doing. making you like the whoops so kind of like the oh I, i've already forgotten it the remedy three software that came out that was supposedly you could play a chord or you could play a a, a, a note and it would actually play the sequence or the midi that came out so the performances are kind of like that but it's based on the, the chords that you have so if you change the chords to change what's playing which changed the pattern which gives you a different feel and look and feel and it actually sounds really good it makes you sound sort of mm, like a better player than did probably i probably ever will be so yeah pretty cool little feature there i, I technically like it so anyway i think that wraps it up with all the new features uh thanks for watching thanks for listening and i will catch you later